The healthcare industry is bustling with professionals. From doctors to environmental services, every facility team member plays a vital role in the well-being of the patients. Most people think of the traditional professions, like nursing, when they think of a healthcare facility. In this video, we'll shine a light on the lesser known behind the scene professional, the sterile processing technician. Sterile processing technicians are responsible for receiving, cleaning, decontaminating, disinfecting, assembling, and sterilizing reusable medical and surgical devices for safe and effective care. Because they serve as the frontline professionals that break the chain of infection every day and are central to surgical procedures, they are known as the heart of the hospital. Sterile processing technicians are highly skilled professionals that work with perioperative services to help ensure patient safety through infection prevention practices. Through accredited courses of study, like the ones offered by the Connecticut State Community College Group, sterile processing technicians can gain certification through the CBSPD and or the HSPA, formerly known as ISHM National Exams. Charged with having and maintaining the highest morals and ethics, sterile processing techs adhere to a number of regulatory mandates, some outlined by the FDA, EPA, and OSHA, and incorporate highly recognized updated standards of practice and recommended techniques by the CDC, AMI, AORN, into their daily routines of sterility assurance. The sterile processing department is broken up into designated areas including decontamination, assembly, sterilization, sterile storage, and more depending on the facility type. Come take a closer look in the sterile processing department as we shine the spotlight on the workflow of the team of professionals working together. We'll follow surgical instruments on their reprocessing journey from dirty to clean to sterile. After the doctor and their team of perioperative professionals complete a surgical procedure, the instruments are pre-treated by removing gross amounts of soil and bodily debris by the OR team. The back table is cleared and the instruments are returned to the case cart. The contaminated instruments are then safely transported to the decontamination area in the sterile processing department. Decontamination is the use of physical or chemical means to remove, inactivate, or destroy bloodborne pathogens on a surface or item to the point where they are no longer capable of transmitting infectious particles and the surface is rendered safe to handle. Team safety is just as important as patient safety. By adhering to standard precautions, SP techs maintain a level of practical application that assures their safety. Wearing facility provided in laundered scrubs with personal protective equipment achieves just that. Putting on or donning PPEs in a specific order allow for SP techs to remain safe while in direct contact with contaminated instrumentation. Let's take a look at the order RSP techs don theirs. First, the shoe covers. Second, the fluid resistant gown. Third, a mask. Fourth, the splash resistant face shield. And finally, heavy duty gloves with an insulation glove optional. After donning their PPEs, they begin to access the returned instruments on the surgical case cart. The SP tech begins to carefully remove the instruments from the case cart while separating and labeling instruments that may need different cleaning processes performed. These are outlined in their instructions for use or IFUs, such as non-submersible items like cords, cameras, and scopes. Instrument sets are prepared for cleaning at the sink by opening any hinged instruments completely and neatly organizing them in the appropriate baskets. Be careful! These instruments can be sharp and we're not just talking about the scissors. After they have all been opened, the instruments go through a cleaning process of soaking, washing, and rinsing, again all according to the IFUs. 
They utilize tools to remove visible soil and debris, like appropriate sized cannula brushes for lumens, nylon brushes in a to and fro motion, water temperature and chemicals, and all of the instruments are prepared for the ultrasonic cleaner. An ultrasonic cleaner is vital to the cleaning process. It performs cavitation to remove remaining debris and soil by creating bubbles that implode against the instrumentation. So cool. These bubbles must be able to contact the instrumentation for effectiveness. So the SP Tech must follow the ultrasonics IFUs as to not overfill and limit the machine's effectiveness. Next, the SP Tech prepares the items for the high heat thermal disinfection process. This is achieved through the washers. Unloading the ultrasonic and placing the instruments on a washer rack, the SP Tech assures that the washer arm can move freely and that the washer can access all areas of the basket. The rack is loaded into the washer and the appropriate cycle is determined via the instrument's IFUs. The empty cart is placed inside a specially designed cart washer for cleaning as well. This process is repeated until the entire case cart has been completed. Generally, the SP Tech is assigned to this location for a set amount of time. The temperature and decontamination must remain between 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity between 30% and 60% with 10 air exchanges per hour. This is important to deter microbial growth and the safety of the SP Tech. Keep in mind that everything in the decontamination area is considered contaminated. So if the SP Tech needs to leave for any reason, PPE must be removed and properly disposed of. Here's our SP Tech doffing their PPE now. First, the shoe covers. Second, the heavy duty gloves. Third, the splash resistant face shield, which may be reusable. Fourth, the fluid resistant gown. And finally, the face mask and insulation gloves. On the other side of the washer is the assembly area. Assembly is dedicated to quality through the inspection of cleanliness and functionality of our cleaned instruments. The facility also suppresses the growth of microbial life by maintaining a temperature between 68 and 73 degrees Fahrenheit and humidity between 30 and 60 percent with 10 air exchanges per hour. Traffic, or the amount of people in the department, is limited as well. Proper attire is required to maintain the cleanliness of this work area. Wearing facility provided and laundered scrubs is a must. Hair and bodily dander can ruin the cleanliness of a set, so wearing head covers, beard covers, and even jackets is important. Before bringing any clean instruments to their workstation, the tech wipes their table and assures that they have the products they need to perform the task. As the instruments come out of the washer, the SP tech selects an instrument set and brings it to their workstation. They carefully remove the instruments. The tech lays out the instruments, grouping them by name and type. If it is not clean, it is not sterile. So even if the instrument goes through the sterilization process, it is not sterile if bio-burden is found. Bio-burden is the number of microbial life on a non-sterile surface. The SP Tech must carefully inspect for bio-burden in the basket and on the instruments. If cleanliness or bio-burden issues are detected, the instruments are returned to decontamination for further reprocessing. The SP technician also checks the functionality of the instrument. Rust, burr, and broken pieces can cause patient harm. Quality checking the function of the instrument can prevent this. There are a number of products available that test different parts of an instrument. The SP tech utilizes a count sheet to accurately assemble the set. The count sheet itemizes the required instrumentation necessary to create a specific set. The SP Tech assembles the instruments in the order outlined on this pick sheet. 
Utilizing tip protectors on sharp instruments will promote SP tax and perioperative professional safety. Appropriately placing heavier instruments on the bottom of the basket and delicate instruments on the top will do this too. Most importantly, don't forget your chemical integrator. This medical device is used to demonstrate that the sterilant of choice has reached the most difficult area of the set. This will help assure sterility. The instruments can now be prepared for sterilization. Depending on the IFUs and the type of sterilization method, the appropriate sterile barrier is selected. This is the final step before the instruments can be placed in the sterilizer. Take a look at the different barriers and the techniques used to prepare the sets for sterilization. Let's look at the wraps. Often double bonded, these barriers are folded and affixed by specialized tape. Checking for holes and defects in the barrier is important before utilizing it for sterility maintenance. Observe the two types of wrap techniques. Envelope fold. Rectangle fold. There are also rigid containers. After inspecting the container for cleanliness, the set is placed inside. The lid is fitted with a filter and inspected for dents and gasket defects. Then secured with two locks marked by external indicators. Another option are peel pouches. These paper plastic pouches are best used for lightweight instrumentation. The SP Tech assures that the seals are even and smooth. Any creases or bubbles may allow microbes to enter and compromise the instrument's sterility. Once the instruments are in a sterile barrier, they need to be labeled. Indicating the set's name on the outside of the barrier will assure that it is easily identifiable and can be retrieved upon request. After the instruments have been inspected and prepared in their sterile barrier on assembly, the SP Tech assigned to sterilization steps in. Sterilization is the removal of all bacterial and microbial life. The SP Tech uses the device's IFU to determine the parameters and type of sterilant required to achieve sterility. That's right folks, there is more than one sterilization option. Steam sterilizers are the most common form of sterilization within facilities. The instruments must undergo a dynamic air removal process while the autoclave achieves a high temperature and pressure for a specific amount of time. Some other types of sterilization include gravity displacement, low temperature gas plasma, 
hydrogen peroxide. While not all sterilizers require steamer pressure, they all serve one primary purpose, to achieve sterility by creating the most uninhabitable environment for microbials to live. The SP Tech is trained to effectively operate and test all the sterilizers in their facility. But how do the sterile processing techs know that the autoclaves are destroying all microbial life? Through validation and verification processes with challenge devices. The Bowie Dick Challenge Pack validates that the steam autoclave is effectively removing air from its inner chamber. A biological challenge pack contains the spore Geobacillus therothermophilus. This particular microorganism is highly resistant and very difficult to destroy. If our autoclaves prove that they can destroy this microorganism, then any other weaker microbe has surely been eliminated. Although these autoclaves perform the act of sterilizing, the SP Tech is responsible for all the steps in between to assure that they function the most effectively. Watch as the SP techs prepare these instruments for steam sterilization. Notice how heavier sets are placed at the bottom, lighter sets towards the top, and peel pouch items are lined paper to plastic per their IFU, all while ensuring quality and integrity of the sterile barrier systems are in place. Notice how the tech doesn't overload the rack. There is adequate space between each set that allows the sterile to penetrate and it also assures that the load contents don't come out wet. Wetness can cause a complete recall of the items and require them to be prepared all over again for re-sterilization. If there is an implant on the load, specific precautions must be adhered to. Medical implants are devices or tissues that are placed inside or on the surface of the body for a permanent or semi-permanent period of time. After organizing the sterilizer rack for optimal sterile and penetration, the SP Tech builds the autoclave load. In this process, the instrument's name, sterilizer and load number, date and time, parameters, and implants are itemized and logged. Some facilities use sticker guns that detail the specifics of the load. These logs are legal documents and can be requested for court proceedings in the result of a patient safety event. Accuracy, consistency, and thoroughness throughout is required. The SP Tech double checks that the load is itemized correctly. Then the door is closed and sealed. The SP Tech selects the appropriate parameters on the autoclave. This must correspond with the instrument's IFUs and match the parameters outlined on the sterilization log. After assuring the correct cycle is selected, the SP Tech begins the sterilization process on the autoclave. Some sterilization cycles can take up to 90 minutes. At the end of the cycle, the autoclave generates a load printout that details all the specs for each part of the sterilization cycle. The SP Tech is trained to read this printout so that they can verify the autoclave reached all the parameters for sterility. After assuring that the printout reflects the information listed on the sterilizer log, they initial the printout and log it accordingly. Use caution upon opening the door. The contents are extremely hot. The SP Tech uses PPE to assure they do not get burned. The cooling process is a vital step in maintaining sterility. As the sterile barriers cool, sterility can be compromised. Simply touching a warm tray with your hand can create a pathway for microbes or pathogens to enter through the sterile barrier. Best practice recommends utilizing an infrared thermometer to check the temperature of the cooling instruments. The SP Tech doesn't physically touch the set until they are at or below room temperature. The SP Tech also checks for quality concerns like water staining on the prepared items, visible damage or debris on the sterile barriers, and confirm external indicators have changed completely. It is the SP Tech's responsibility to stop unsterile or compromised sets from reaching the patient. Any issues must be reported as they may result in a load recall. Sterile processing practices event-related sterility maintenance. 
This means that once an instrument has gone through the decontamination, cleaning, inspection, and sterilization process, it is sterile until it is used. With that being said, the instrument sterility has to be maintained accordingly. Instrument sterility is maintained in the sterile storage area of the department. This area decreases the opportunity for microbial growth by keeping the temperature between 68 and 73 degrees Fahrenheit, humidity between 30 and 60 percent, with air exchanges occurring four times per hour. Assuring that the sterile barriers do not become compromised is of the utmost importance. Carefully lifting the instruments and placing them in their assigned areas helps to prevent holes, rips, or damage to the sterile barrier. Having a designated spot for each set will also help in locating the sterile instrument when it is requested. The type of shells used in sterile storage vary, but they all must have solid bottoms to prevent dirt and dust from compromising the sets. They also have to be 8 to 10 inches from the floor and 18 inches from fire sprinklers. Sterile processing departments come in all shapes and sizes. The types of instruments, equipment, and staffing models are all based on a number of considerations like case volume, surgical services, and patient needs. Some varying areas of responsibilities that you may see in the field include case cart picking, i.e. putting the sterile instruments on a case cart to be used for specific surgical cases, cleaning patient care equipment, the use of an electronic instrument tracking system, fielding phone calls and requests from perioperative teams. Regardless, the fact remains, surgery cannot happen without sterile processing. After this video, you can see why SP techs are the pulse of the profession and how they break the chain of infection every day. You have seen a day in the life of a sterile processing technician, a patient safety professional. So, are you ready to become part of the heart of the hospital?